And uh, obviously, you guys know out there, I'm a huge Tennessee Vols fan. I've got uh, this Tennessee helmet back here. Also, this new Tennessee helmet. Look, look, look at this, y'all. Okay, my sister got this for me for Christmas, okay? It's a it's a smoky gray hat, but as you can see there, it's the, the smoky mountains here in the beautiful state of Tennessee, which we take great pride in. So it's like a smoky gray, smoky mountains helmet. Really, really cool stuff. So shout out, Chloe. I appreciate that, that Christmas gift. But um, Tennessee plays Iowa today in the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl against the Iowa Hawkeyes, who were the Big Ten runner-up. So for the final time this season, this football season, we'll come back with some basketball stuff in a couple months. Don't you worry. But for the last time this season, the inaugural season of the Vol View, thank you so much, everybody, for watching and enjoying all season long. One more, and let's finish on a high note, Tennessee. The Vol View starts right now. In Tennessee. It is indeed football time in Tennessee. The Vols taking on the Iowa Hawkeyes once again in the Cheez It Citrus Bowl. I may have a bowl of Cheez Its while I watch this game. I don't know. But Tennessee in this game. So I, I've always, I've already sort of recapped the season and the highs and the lows. And obviously, Tennessee uh, did not really, given the expectations come in, didn't really meet them. That said, it was by no means like a, a disaster season. They didn't barely make a bowl game. They weren't Florida. How about that, Florida? How about how, how's, how's five and seven feel? Anyways, Tennessee taking on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Tennessee ranked 21st in the nation. Iowa ranked 17th. The Hawkeyes finished second, or I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say second. They finished runner up in the Big Ten, losing to Michigan in the Big Ten title game 26 to nothing. And the thing for Tennessee is uh, Joe Milton, who's been the starting quarterback this season. And by the way, can I say shout out to Joe Milton? And I don't like the hate that this guy's getting right now from some people in Vol Nation. I do not like this at all because this is a dude who transferred to the University of Tennessee uh, after the 2020 season, which was a disaster for Tennessee, not just on the field, but off the field. The coach got fired. Uh, there was recruiting violations. Uh, there, was, there, was, there was punishment against the, against the program. It was a disaster. And Joe Milton said, I'm going to transfer there, team up with Josh Heupel, the head coach of the Vols, great play caller, right? I've been, I've been come, come here, become the starting quarterback, which he did. And two games into the season, he got benched for Hendon Hooker, who we know never gave the job up, and Hendon became a legend at Tennessee. Milton stayed throughout 2021 through 2022, came back this year for a senior year to start for the Vols, played relatively well, uh, you know, by and large. Again, 20 touchdowns, five picks, so a good touchdown to interception ratio uh, and had a, a solid QBR as well. So the thing is for Joe Milton, he is not going to play today because he is going to sit out for uh, to get ready for the NFL draft. So shout out Joe Milton. Uh, I think the scouts are going to be blown away by his arm. Pocket awareness concerns me. We'll see what Joe Milton does at the next level, wishing him absolutely nothing but the best. But for Tennessee, starting at quarterback today, and again, I've pronounced his name multiple different ways. I've heard it pronounced multiple different ways. I will do my very, very best. Nico Yamaleva. I think I said his name correctly. I may, I may have not. We'll see. But Nico will be making his first start as the Tennessee Vols quarterback today against Iowa. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, Nico is a true freshman, and last year was the number one ranked high school quarterback in all of high school football, even over Arch Manning, who's at Texas right now. He's ranked even over Arch, even over a Manning, uh, even over Peyton and Eli's nephew. He was ranked over him. So Nico's a guy who's mobile, relatively big dude could put on some muscle, but that's going to come. He's still a kid. He's going to, he's going to adjust as time goes on, but Nico's a dude, good arm, really accurate, excellent outside of the pocket. This is a dude who brings all the tools to the table. And in doing so, he's going to provide a very, very bright future for the university of Tennessee with Josh Heupel, obviously as his offensive play caller. So he's going to start against Iowa. The thing that I find odd is evidently Vegas does. It doesn't have nearly as much confidence in Nico as I do. Because of a simple fact, <clears throat> I guess that it, because he's a true freshman, Milton is the more experienced guy. He's a senior. 
Uh, the line a couple of weeks ago got to as high as Tennessee minus eight and a half. Well, now it's down a full three points to Tennessee minus five and a half, which I find a bit odd. But to give the Iowa Hawkeyes credit, I have called them the Pittsburgh Steelers, my Pittsburgh Steelers of college football. Now, that doesn't apply as much now because my Steelers, man, we are rolling offensively. But by and large, the Steelers have not been a good offense this year. Neither has Iowa. By the way, the uniforms look very similar to Pittsburgh. But Iowa this year, okay? This is in, gosh, what was this? What would this be? Week seven? From week seven on, these are their offensive point totals. They scored 15 in a win against uh, Wisconsin. They scored 10 in a loss to Minnesota. They scored 10 in a win over Northwestern. 22 in a win over Rutgers. 15 in a win over Illinois. 13 in a win over Nebraska. And then they got shut out by Michigan in the Big Ten title game. So they are not a good offense. Matter of fact, they're a very bad offense. But like the Steelers, very, very good defense. An excellent defense for that matter. In that stretch, since week seven, they gave up six to Wisconsin. They gave up 12 to Minnesota in a game that they actually lost. Seven to Northwestern. A shutout against Rutgers. 13 points against Illinois. 10 points against Nebraska. And again, they give it 26 to Michigan. But by and large, that's not terrible. Michigan is more of a ground and pound team, so they're not going to score as much as other teams. But still 26, that's not, it's not getting embarrassed. It's the offense that obviously didn't show up to the party. So for that reason, because of how great uh, Iowa's defense has been and how good Tennessee's defense has been at points this season, the over-under is only 36 and a half. Uh, Tennessee favor minus five and a half. So when I look at this game, I could see Josh Heifel, especially in those first, that opening one, two drives to start the game, really what your kind of your, your primary game plan is for, your opening script, your opening game plan is to, to develop, to get some high percentage completion for Nico, which is what that offense is surrounded with uh, or, or, or prides itself on. You're going to have Dylan Sampson at running back, Jabari Small, and 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 um, Jalen Wright declaring for the NFL draft. So Jabari Small, uh, I'm sorry, um, Dylan Sampson at running back to rush the football. Tennessee's got an excellent offensive line when healthy, which they are. So to be able to run the football effectively with Sampson, get some high percentage completions with Nico, and then maybe open up the offense a little bit in the second half if he's able to feel comfortable enough. I anticipate Tennessee's defense will do a great job against Iowa. Uh, Iowa's offense, that does, that's not saying much. I don't see Iowa getting much of anything going, certainly in the passing game, if not the running game as well. With that, So with all that said, I'm going to take my balls 27-10 to 10 over the Iowa Hawkeyes and win this game and win the Citrus Bowl and finish 9-4, and four, get two bowl wins under head coach Josh Heupel. Tennessee wins this one 27-10 over Iowa. They do obviously cover the 5.5-point spread. And I guess, would that hit the over-under? Okay, that's over barely. Barely. So it's 36 and a half. That's 37. So by the skin of skin of their teeth, I think they will hit the over under and Tennessee will cover. Vols win 27 to 10 of the Iowa Hawkeyes. And that will conclude our 2023 football season. It's been a fun one doing the Vol View every Friday at 630 Eastern. Obviously, today's not the case, but you know, by and large, 630 Eastern, 330 Pacific time every Friday, the Vol View. Obviously, we will be back next college football season. Cannot wait for Nico time, the Nico era with Josh Heupel, cannot wait. It's going to be some fun, fun stuff. But go Vols, beat Iowa 27 to 10. I'm calling it right now on the spot. We do hit the over-under, and Tennessee does cover the five-and-a-half point spread. And we finish this season on a high note, and we get a good look at what the near future looks like for Tennessee with Nico at quarterback. So, until next season, that is it for the Vol View College Football Edition. The Vol View. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live, as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.